Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Just a few days ago, David Silver, who was at DeepMind, and Richard Sutton published this paper, Welcome to the Era of Experience. And in this paper, they talk about how they think the next stage of AI should be built. Now, Richard Sutton is, along with Andrew Barto, one of the recipients of the 2024 ACM Turing Award. And the two of them got this recognition because they created the field of reinforcement learning. And before we even start talking about the experience paper, it's worth quickly mentioning this now famous paper by Richard Sutton called The Bitter Lesson. And the point being made in that Bitter Lesson paper was that general methods that use computation will beat out more specific or more domain-specific algorithms. And this has been proven correct over and over again. And our current era with LLMs is basically the biggest proof of this bitter lesson. Why is it bitter? Because there were entire fields of computer science like natural language processing, expert systems, what is now called old-fashioned AI that depended on building all these very special purpose bespoke algorithms that tried to get intelligent behavior from computation. And they have all been largely made irrelevant by the very large language models of today, which just used huge amounts of data, pretty much all the human data available to us, plus massive computation to build general purpose models, which subsumed all the things those prior bespoke systems wanted to do. And if you keep that bitter lesson in mind, this paper about the era of experience is a conceptual successor to the bitter lesson. So they start by noting that the models of today, the LLMs of today, are all based on human data. And these LLMs have shown some very amazing capabilities, but because they have been trained on human data, they probably will not show intelligence that surpasses that of humans. There's also a physical limitation. The human data that was used to train these LLMs has pretty much been exhausted. There isn't any more data left to train on. And with that realization comes the need for a new source of data. And the central point of this paper is that this new source of data will not be human data, but will be experiential data that agents, AI agents themselves will harvest by interacting with their environment. And once an agent can continuously learn from its own experience by interacting from its environment, you remove the limits on how much data you can get because they can pretty much learn and interact with their environment in an unbounded manner, just like humans when they interact with the environment and learn from the environment. There are no limits to how much they can learn or how much they can interact with the environment. This idea has already been demonstrated with systems like AlphaProof because while it did train on a large body of human-proved theorems, the vast majority of its data set was synthetically generated, a collection of about 100 million synthetically generated theorems that came from interacting with a formal theorem prover. And this is what allowed Alpha Proof to solve new and challenging mathematical problems that so far even humans could not solve. Another more recent example of this approach was DeepSeq, where they found that using just pure reinforcement learning, they were able to produce a reasoning model that showed very high performance. So, this idea of using experience to learn from breaks down into four more concrete points, and we look at each of them in turn. One is to have long-running streams of experience rather than the short 
episodic interactions we have with models right now. The next idea is to have grounded interactions with the environment, so not mediated by a human. And a corollary to that is to experience the consequences of those actions also directly, or as they put it, in a grounded way. And they frame it as rewards. Rewards are basically the consequences of actions and observations in the environment. And finally, the fourth pillar of this plan is to have the agent plan and reason in its own modalities rather than reasoning only in human terms. So let's look at each one of those in a bit more detail. So one of the shortcomings of LLMs, of course, is that they have a finite context window. Now those windows are growing pretty large, a million, even two million in some recent models in terms of tokens, but they're still not of a size where an AI agent could have unbounded continuous learning within that window. What they're proposing is agents that have a very long running stream of experience, just like humans do. And it is this long running stream of experience that forms the basis on which an agent can learn deep things over a long time. Next, we come to how this agent acts and observes. The shortcoming of the way we do LLMs today is that they are able to observe only the outputs of human privileged actions and mostly through text. But if you look at other forms of intelligence like human or animal intelligence, they have all these other modalities like motor control, sensors, and so on. We have five senses. So how do you let AI agents have these kinds of grounded actions and observations? You have to let them interact directly with the real world. So one example is APIs. Another example is computer use models. But it should not be just limited to that. Agents should be able to use digital interfaces and sense physically real things about the environment and learn from those things. So once you have an agent able to directly learn from its environment, able to directly take actions in it and observe what happens, the next question is, what should those agents make of those observations? And that's basically the question of rewards. And here the authors are saying that these agents should directly learn from these external events and signals and not just from humans. If you look at the LLMs of today, that have been trained on things like reinforcement learning with human feedback, RLHF. The authors here take exception to the HF, the human feedback part of RLHF, because it's as if the human feedback is telling the model what's better rather than the model itself looking at the consequences of its choices or actions and learning which choice is better. So the human is being a proxy for the real world. And so natural question is, if humans don't tell the model or the agent what's preferable, how is it going to figure it out on its own? And the authors point out that the real world is full of quantitative feedback, things like cost or error rates, productivity, health metrics, and so on that the model can directly observe and learn from. It doesn't need a human go-between. And finally, we come to the fourth pillar of this manifesto, which is how do these models then use all this experience, all this reward information to then plan and reason? If you look at LLMs today, the dominant mode of reasoning is chain of thought. But this is very much based on the way humans think, especially the way humans think with natural language. What the authors here are surmising is that if you look beyond human language, surely there's non-human formal systems that can also plan and reason, and they very well might be able to plan and reason in a much better way than the way humans do it. Again, going back to the alpha proof example, the way it proved theorems was very different than the way human mathematicians do it. One common fear of 
this kind of planning and reasoning is that the agent will do what is known as the paperclip scenario. If it's given one reward function, like make paperclips, it'll destroy the entire world just to make paperclips. But the authors here are saying, if the agent is indeed grounded in real world data, real world rewards and consequences, it will notice when it is doing something bad. This feedback loop that it's getting from the real world will serve as a natural deterrent to it doing catastrophic things. They have this diagram in the paper, which is a great summary of the various eras of AI as viewed through the lens of what was the dominant source of data used to train these AI systems. If you look at systems like Alpha Zero, they were largely trained on synthetic data, hence the era of simulation. Then comes the current age we're in, which is dominated by LLMs, trained mostly on human data that we're pretty much running out of. And the authors here are looking to the next stage, which they call the era of experience. So learning directly from acting in and experiencing the real world itself and getting the reward function feedback from those actions in the real world. And the big advantage of that is that a, you're grounded in the real world, and B, that you can get pretty much unlimited data this way. So that was a quick look at this era of experience paper, which charts out a path for how one would use reinforcement learning, but grounded in the real world to kick off the next stage of artificial intelligence. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing, like the video, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.